You are listening to the Anxiety Podcast, where we support you to overcome anxiety and reduce stress. We will get vulnerable and it will be real. Here's your host, Tim J.P. Collins. Hello and welcome to the Anxiety Podcast. I just spent a little bit of time trying to do this on my with my professional recording studio microphone and uh, it wasn't playing today so I'm on my sort of traveling backup setup if you will right now so hopefully the sound is coming through really well but I just wanted to make a quick impromptu episode because today in the mighty country of Canada it is Canadian Thanksgiving and I just wanted to take 10 minutes out and just put a quick podcast out to say thank you to you for listening so I'll go into that in a bit more detail in a moment and also just to note, there is a Thanksgiving in America as well, which is in November, I think. So I'm not sure why they're different dates. Maybe you can Google that. I'm not sure. But you can be confident, suffice to say, I will be celebrating both. Um, in England, where I grew up, we used to call it Harvest Festival, I think. But I remember collecting pumpkins and stuff and going to church, but I'm not quite sure. Uh, I don't think we got a day off for that. I think it was just a, a thing we did. Maybe somebody can clarify Anyway, if you're new to the podcast, head on over to anxietypodcast.com, sign up for your End Anxiety Toolkit, get the five-week course, buy yourself an anxiety journal. In fact, you should buy an anxiety journal now, and then it'll be with you in time for Christmas, right? Good timing. Um, so there you go. And I, I have a, a message from one of my lovely listeners, somebody who helped do the illustration, Bernice, I'll give her a shout out, did the illustration in the anxiety journal, and she's gone through four of them already. So she's just... She's probably been doing it religiously every day since I created the Anxiety Journal uh, a year or two ago. So there you go. Congrats, Bernice. Um, Okay, so I kind of sat there today and went out shopping and bought some food and preparing nice things. And Thanksgiving is um, is is a big deal. I think Thanksgiving in the states, anyway, is bigger than their Christmas holidays, just because. You know, everybody celebrates it. It's not necessarily religious. And so, yeah, everybody gets stuck in. So it's massive in the US. It's still a big deal in Canada as well. And so people go all out with turkeys. And today we've got, we're making some crazy like stuffing with bacon and nuts and all sorts of good stuff in it. What else we got? We got chicken instead of turkey because that's just a preference thing. And um, yeah, I got some nice ice cream and some gluten free, dairy free cheesecake. <laughs> I will let you know how that works out on a future uh, episode. But yeah, we've got lots of uh, nice things to, to eat and drink. And it gets me thinking about like um, how my heart gets topped up on a daily basis by the amazing, fantastic messages I get from listeners. I get Facebook messages. I get DMs on the gram, Instagram. I get emails directly sort of and through the website. And um, I just wanted to say thank you to everybody who listens and you know, I've committed a significant amount of effort in my life to creating this podcast. And so when it hits home and makes a difference, when I hear from people whose lives have been altered, you know, even a little bit by some of the stuff that I've created, um, and in some ways has changed the trajectory of people's lives in, in a massive way, I just want to say thank you for listening. Thank you for implementing one of the two of the things that I've suggested. And I go back to really the start of this whole experiment the impetus for why I put this out in the first place is because it's something that I couldn't find myself and you know there's other great people doing great work in in the anxiety support world but for me I wanted a a frank direct upbeat amusing sometimes conversation that I could connect to and and with real sort of practical knowledge in there that I could put into practice um, and so that's what I c- attempt to continue to create. You'll be the judge of whether I'm being successful or not with that. But every time I hear from somebody who where I've made a difference, it blows my mind. And um, so I just want to say thank you. Um, and, you know, that's what makes me go on to record. And if I'm ever thinking, well, God, it's 11 o'clock at night, I've got to go to work tomorrow, then those are the messages that get me going and get me thinking, right, this isn't about me anymore. I'm doing it for you. I've got to, put, I've got to keep the story going and keep, keep it rocking. Um, so I just wanted to go on and say thank you very much for listening to these podcasts I put out. Thank you to the people who tell their friends or family about it and spread the word because a lot of the time it's recommendations that get it around. Um, and thank you even to like therapists or counselors in schools and places who recommend it to clients. I've had lots of that as well. Um, and to the people who've ha- taken the time to interact with me through email or um, direct messages or who have left a review for me online or subscribed 
just know that I read every single message I get and um, attempt to soak it in because some of them are very, very complimentary and it's easy to say, oh, you did it or it wasn't me. But, you know, I was speaking to um, a friend of mine in the past and um, they said, you know, you should really do a better job of accepting people's thanks and praise for you because you blow it off like it's nothing. Like you're, you're sort of not worthy to accept it. And I don't know if this resonates with you, but sometimes somebody says, thank you, I'm really grateful for what you're doing. You say, yeah, no problem. And you don't give it any time to hit home. You don't give it any time to land. So when people say thank you to you, actually say, look them in the eye and say, you know, you're welcome. You are welcome. Don't have to say, oh, it was nothing. Sorry. Don't do all that sort of demeaning stuff. Just say you're welcome. You deserve that thanks, right? And um, Philip, good old Philip McKernan, who often gets a shout out here. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if his analogy, his analogy kind of makes sense, but um, it's an interesting one. But he said to me, like, think of like accepting gratitude like you're eating an ice cream. You can't just eat, you don't eat the whole ice cream in one go and say thanks and down it. You just, you, you know, you take a lick of the ice cream, you bite the side off, you have a nibble on the flake, and you just each time let it take time to, to soak in right? Let it hit home. And just sometimes if somebody says thank you to you, like I'm, this is a message to myself as well. Somebody says thank you to me. I sit there and I look at that and I'm like, wow, somebody went to the trouble of writing that and sending it to me. And that's a direct reflection of the efforts I put out. If we're going to get all spiritual for a moment, I put that out into the universe through the medium of podcast land. And it's impacted somebody. It's just amazing, isn't it? Like something I said, made a difference and they've come back and said thank you and just it's just repaid me it's just such a wonderful circle of circle of life lion king style um you know and i do this weird thing sometimes which i just noticed the other day but my kids frown at me sometimes um i'm a pretty grateful person and sometimes i'm when i'm driving in the car i just start to smile because one of those stories or memories will come into my head or i'll be just be driving my car and thinking this life's fucking good when you're not like freaking out all the time, right? When I, when, you know, when I was in that super anxious state and thinking back to that. Now, when I look back on it, and I encourage you when you have good times, and I know, you know, people out there are going through stuff, but when you have good times, just those are the times to let it hit and be like, this is good. This is what good feels like. And maybe a lot of people just, that's normal for them and they take it for granted. But for me, it isn't like feeling good and being able to function and do what I want to do in, in life is fantastic. And I appreciate it so much. So sometimes when I'm in my car with the kids and I start smiling, like, dad, why are you smiling about? I'm like, this is good. Like life is good. We're winning. Like, they're like, what are you talking about? We haven't won anything. We're just going to the supermarket. I'm like, yeah, but you know, we, we have a lot of stuff to be grateful for. And, um, yeah, when I'm feeling particularly pumped up, I'll do the same thing. I'll make a fist and I'll be like, yes, we've done it. And that freaks them out even more. They're like, what? We haven't done anything, dad. What are you talking about? I'm like, it's just celebrate feeling good in the times when you are good in the same depth of despair of when we feel bad that you're like, this is terrible. It's awful. Think of all the emotion we put into the negative side, match that on the upside, you know, have a smile on your face, celebrate. Walk outside into the back garden where nobody can see you or walk into a field and just shout, yes, this is great. Celebrate that stuff. That was a bit of a segue. I don't know where that came from. Um, but part of, you know, part of that is driven by the context of how tough life has been in the past. And without, when you have the depths of the low, then when you get back to thinking life's going good, then you're like, now I get it, right? Otherwise, before it's like flatline. This is fine. Things are all right. You know, we have such wonderful privileged problems to consider about what we should eat for dinner or you know what color jacket we should buy or something it's just so irrelevant in the bigger scheme of things i think it's all about how we feel if you feel good and then you can compare that to when you felt bad then you have context if you take somebody who's freezing cold outside and bring them in and say come and sit in front of the fire and have a hot cup of cocoa and a biscuit they're gonna be like that's fucking amazing that's a huge difference right so when you're in the good place celebrate it recognize it then you then you're really reinforcing that as being something that i want to i want to feel like that more often i want to feel like this all the time because it's so good so be sure to celebrate in equal measure take a moment in your day and say yes when i'm feeling good i appreciate i'm happy and you know i get to be thankful for a lot of things i'm thankful for my family and everybody's in good health 
Um, I'm thankful for the relationship I have with my wife and with my kids. I'm thankful for my body and how it carries me around every day and rarely complains. Occasionally, my body uh, reacts and it's usually because I've neglected it for a while. And I'm thankful for where I live. I live in a beautiful place in a beautiful country surrounded by wonderful people. So grateful. I'm thankful for working for a company like I do at the moment where I truly look forward to going to work every day and spending time with great people. It's just an well, amazing situation. I'm thankful for all the friends I've got and how they support me and lift me up and challenge me to be better. But you know what? About all the things that I'm thankful for, all the things I just mentioned, there is one final thing I'd like to point out for anybody who's listening to this and saying, well, it's easy for, for you to say, Tim, because, uh, you know, you've got good fortune. You've, you know, you're, you're lucky how things have worked out. I'd like to challenge that because I'm so thankful for all the thing, all those things. And, but I did, you know, I chose them. I chose where I wanted to live. I chose where I wanted to work. I choose how I want to spend time with my family. I chose the friendships I want to invest in. I chose to put effort into my physical and mental well-being. You can too. If any of those things I listed off, you're like, well, that's not, it's not going so well for me, mate. Fine, change it, do something. All of the things I was thankful for historically were horrific for me at different times in my life. Right? You can change them. You can do that. Pick one thing, start working on it every day. You can change stuff. My oldest son was saying to me the other day, I'm not sure I want to go to university, Dad. And I said, well, don't then. Like, what do you want to do? He's 12. You don't have to decide what you're going to grow up and what you're going to do when you grow up in the future. You've got loads of time for that. You don't have to decide now. And I said to him, although I didn't go to university myself, I believe that learning is a lifelong thing. Every day when I ride my bike to work, I'm listening to podcasts or audiobooks or things that I want to use to enhance my life and make me better. Because I feel like I'm worth it. And if you're listening to this, you're already doing that. You are worth it. So keep investing in all those different areas. And again, finally, thank you for listening to this. You've made my day. I really appreciate it. If you have questions you want me to talk about on the podcast, go to the contact page. Connect with me on the socials. And remember, until next time, less anxiety, more life. Thank you for listening to the Anxiety Podcast. For more information, go to theanxietypodcast.com.